Hey guys, welcome back to Regular Secular Mama. I just thought I'd pop in here really quick before the sun went down uh, to make a quick little video of how I get a setup for our homeschool week. This isn't going to be a super detailed look at all of my planning systems. It's just kind of a quick little plan with me kind of video. So it's kind of a mess right now because we were in the house all weekend. I'm going to go ahead and tidy up a little bit so I have space to um, get us set up for our week. So the first thing that I do is I take everything that they have down in their done drawers. I just go in and make sure that their bookmarks are in the right place, that they haven't um, you know, missed any problems that they need to go back and fix, and I kind of uh, organize it for when I put it back in the top drawer, which is their to-do drawer. It's just one of those plastic things you can get at Walmart. Um, what you see there in my hand is a loop list. Um, we've started using this for anything that we don't really need to do every single day, but I don't want them to miss. Um, they have a loop list and they just kind of work their way down the list, one or two things a day, and just start at the top when they get to the end. And it's been working really well, so if you're interested, I will um, make another video talking more about that. As far as cursive goes, both my kids have already learned how to write in cursive. Um, I will link to my favorite resource for that. It's free. It's a YouTube uh, series. I mentioned it in another video as well, but um, it's really simple and there are handouts that you can print out if you want to, just to simply copy the strokes. That book right there, uh, this is kind of off topic, but that is called a Wolf Called Wander, and it was assigned in our Build Your Library Level 5, I believe. It is so, so good. I enjoyed it so much myself, and my daughter just loved it. I, she read like half the book in one day, <laughs> and I had to tell her to slow down a little bit. But it's the story about, it's, it's about a real wolf who they put a tracker on and he went on this journey at like a thousand miles across the Pacific Northwest. Um, anyway, I just had to gush about it when I saw it on my video. It's, it's really, really good. <laughs> um, so what I do is I just pull sentences from what we're doing in history or science or maybe one of our read-alouds or something and they just copy a sentence or two every day. Really simple. And that is outside of their regular copy work and dictation. I could type this up ahead of time, but I just prefer to pull things from what we're doing in the moment, and I don't always stick to a schedule when it comes to our content work. So this is fine. It's practice for me to improve my cursive as well. So the next thing that I will do is take out my own planner and start filling in all the things that we're going to do throughout our day. All right, so I have my planner out. It's, uh, it's a very basic planner. It's like the one your middle school teacher may have used if you went to public school. <laughs> um, I used to kind of bullet journal it, but I like having all the boxes already set up for me. Anyway, so I just go in and I kind of fill out what I hope to do each day. They're, they're very small um, notes, though. I don't actually add a whole lot of detail because, you know, things are gonna change. Here's what you're looking at on my screen. It's kind of a basic um, year overview or a map of what we have going on in our curriculum each week. Um, it's gonna change, like this is not all gonna stay the same. So I don't pre-fill in a whole lot. A lot of this is um, more of a record of what we did, just for myself. Um, this is all of our content work that we do together. And then my daughter, all of her stuff, and my son's stuff over here. Um, I know we're pretty much going to get through a lesson of math a week, so I filled all those in. Um, and then these are just kind of to keep me on track so I know if I'm falling behind or if we're kind of ahead. Um, and just little reminders of things that we have coming up, like planning for our science fair at the end of the year, um, things like that. So 
like I said, a lot of it is me filling in things we've already done. Um, so I know what we're going to do this week. So I've gone in and I've filled out pretty much everything we plan to do that week. Um, I've also added in any outings we have. All those little orange things are anytime we have to leave the house in the afternoon or evening or soccer practice or whatever. And then I will go through my actual teacher manual for history and science and make sure there is no uh, materials that I need to buy to do our activities. I'm also filling in um, the exact chapters I want my daughter to read out of her independent reader. Um, and that's pretty much it for this part. There are just a couple of little notes to remind myself of things. And the one thing that I always forget until the very end is to grade math tests. <laughs> I don't actually keep grades at this point, but I do go through and check and make sure there's nothing we need to cover in more detail. And I do have them go back and fix their mistakes in their math test. I think it's good for them to see their mistakes um, <laughs> because they grow your brain. Next, I'm taking out my huge teacher binder and just recording their math tests and pulling out any papers that we might need to go along with our history and science and their math tests for the coming week. So if you saw me reaching over here to the side, it's um, because I pulled out my handy teacher card. I usually keep it pushed out of the way under my whiteboard and then I just roll it out whenever I'm you know, planning for the week and I need to have things handy to be able to reach. Um, I just keep my binder down here with like extra handouts and um, anything that I keep from my own records. I have their teacher guides that go along with their curriculum up here for easy reference. I have my planner that you just saw, um, a folder to put handouts that we need for this week and you know like paper clips and post-it notes and stuff like that. Alright now that I have our week all planned out and ready to go I can go into my kids personal like bullet journal style planners and set up their weeks for them. Um, I used to type up a list for my daughter who is 10 years old right now and she would kind of figure out her week on her own but it wasn't working very well. She was getting a little overwhelmed, I think, with um, trying to plan her own week. So I'll just help her out with it for a couple more years and we'll try again later. Uh, my son is very, very easily distracted. He needs it cut and dry and easy to follow. <laughs> so I brought you over to the other side of my living room where I have my home base. This is where I spend most of our homeschool mornings um, reading aloud from our literature and from our history and everything. It's a lot of reading, but <laughs> this is where I spend most of my mornings with my coffee and my book cart. So this is the last thing I will do to get ready for our week. I'll come over here and just make sure I have the right books that we need for this week. Make sure it's not too cluttered um, so we can get started tomorrow morning. All right, well, that's pretty much it. That's all I have for planning our homeschool week. It seems like it's kind of a lot of moving parts, but it really doesn't take me that long if I'm focused and I don't get interrupted by children. So I hope that was helpful for some of you or maybe cathartic in some way. <laughs> if there was anything in this video that you'd like to see in a little more detail, let me know in the comments down below and I'll make a quick video about it.